Proverbs chapter 8. You know, I, I know that uh, this book, uh, it's over 2,000 years old, and of course there's parts of this book that go all the way back to the beginning. But the Word of God never gets old. Uh, it, it, heaven and earth shall pass away. But he said, my word shall never pass away. Now, I, I, you know, you think about these statements, and, and these statements are so profound and so amazing that if we take them literally, uh, it, 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 it could overwhelm me because he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That, that means, it doesn't mean they won't, it won't be fulfilled, but that means what Jesus was teaching in, in the context, so it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it means if we look down a million years from now, the word of God will still be the word of God. A billion years. How many of you know what a billion is? It's a thousand million. So a billion years from now, a thousand million years from now, the word will still be the word. That's what he said. Heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, the word of the Lord endureth for how long? Forever. For, forever is never ending. So it, it's, it's hard for us to understand that heaven right now, it, if God would say, okay, that's it, I'm done. Uh, everybody who's going to get saved is saved, okay? And, but heaven is already populated. Heaven is already full. We have no idea of how many people who have gone on to glory who died loving God. But th think about this. That was, it's not my message, but a trillion years from now, a trillion, a trillion is, what's a billion? It's a thousand million, so that would be a thousand trillion. It would be a thousand billion would be a trillion. So, a hundred trillion years from now, a hundred trillion, you know, I'm only 68, you know, like, oh, I'm 68, but wait, wait, a hundred trillion years from now, my family and I, we always talk about, we're glad we didn't live in the days of Adam, because those poor people had to live in corrupted flesh up to almost a thousand years. I can barely handle 68 let alone, a lot of those rascals didn't get married until they were three, four, five hundred years old. <laughs> I cannot, and I literally believe that. And I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I think God shortened the days because he knew we couldn't handle that, you know. Corruption of the flesh, man, is terrible. But a, 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 a trillion, trillion, trillion years from now, the word of God will still be there. And he upholds all things by the power of his word. And I really believe probably the most underrated reality there is in the body of Christ. I know we've underrated who Jesus is. I, I know that we have. Be, because all things, and we've underrated really what faith can do. Because all things are possible to those who go to church. Don't you wish that was true? No, all things are possible to those who believe. But, but I think we've underrated the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, we can see this reality through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and, and, and the book of Acts. But I think we've really super under, undervalued or underrated the power of God's word in the human heart. Not in the head, not in the pages, but in our heart. And if I really, really, really had, a, because how I many know Revelation is progressive? You know, it's like from the time you're born from your mama's womb, you begin to have a revelation of what it means to be human. Now, some people never discover what it means to be human, but you have a, it's a progressive revelation, right? You know, as I watch our granddaughter, I'm watching her mentally, emotionally, and, and, every, and physically grow and mature, right? Which we, we all have done that, right? How many of you have grown, grown and matured some? Okay, most of you. Uh, but, but I want you to see that it is, a well, it's the same thing with God's word. Really, the word of God, as we get revelation, should become more important to us as we get older. And I, I think, you know, in the world, they call it Alzheimer's disease. And I think we have a lot of that in the church today, spiritually speaking. 
we kind of forget where we came from. We kind of forget what God has done for us. We kind of forget of what God still wants to do. I'll tell you, when I got born again in what we called the Word of Faith movement, it was moving, it was shaking, it was coming on strong. And I was excited, you know, way back in the very beginning with Brother Hagen and Charles Caps, and, and, and you can even say people like, how many ever heard of Charles and Francis Hunter? See, uh, they used to come and preach for me all the time. Les, Dr. Lester Summerall, he's been in our pulpit here. Uh, but but I, I thought the Word of Faith movement would really, really come on strong. And I hate to tell you this, it, it, there's, it's really backed off to a great extent. Uh, but we know we have an enemy called the devil. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy what? The reality of who God is. He, that's what he's coming to do. And, and, if we, and, 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 and if we permit him to do it, he'll do it. You know, look at, we've lost our freedom in America. Really, I mean, did you know that when he first started the education system in America, public schools, did you know they used the Bible to teach the kids? I mean, that's what they used. They used the Bible. And, and then prayer was in the public schools. I'm talking about secular schools. And way back in, in, in most schools in the 40s and the 50s, the, the, the bi two biggest problems they had in the public education system, I wrote a book about it, you know, it was running in the hallways and chewing gum. And now it's rape, murder, terrible, terrible things in the school system. Uh, insanity in the school system. But you know how that happened? They outlawed the Bible in the school. They outlawed the word of God. Now, wait a minute. The word of God was the sought. It was the light. It was the very fiber of our nation that kept morality. So, you know, now there are some nations that there are such dictators where if you just step out of line with what the government says, off with your head, you're gone. Well, that's not what this, this nation did. We had the Bible, the Bible in the public school. And I'm going to just make another statement here. It was the King James Version. Now, I'm not just a King James man. I'm just saying it was the, what we call the 1611 Version, okay? Well, they got the Bible out of the school. And then what did the church, because I'm talking about divine boldness. What did the church do? Now, this is back in the 60s. What did the, the body of Christ do during that time? Not a peep. Not a word. No, no. If they would have stood up and said, no, you're not doing this. We're not putting up with this. They would have backed off. And then they turned around and got prayer out of the school. I mean, they took prayer out of the school, communicating with God where every day they would start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and they would pray. And now what do we have? We have children that are completely out of control. We've got children that do not obey their parents, but they literally control the parents. Spoiled, rotten, disobedient, ungodly, full of the flesh. You would be shocked. And I mean, I got the stats in my book. Most of the, I say this in love. I'm not being critical tonight. Do you know most of these girls in the public school system are losing their virginity by the time they're 10 and 12? They're losing their virginity. That means, why? Because they are sexualizing our children. They are corrupting them. And we got parents that see nothing wrong with that. See, and, but it's the fulfilling of a prophetic word where in the last days, evil will be spoke, spoken good of and good will be speaking evil of. And so now I guess there's a couple of states, they're trying to rectify it and they're trying to bring back, I think as uh, Johnny come lately, they're trying to bring the Ten Commandments back into some of these schools and people are acting like it's the end of the world. Wait, that's how our education system was built on the Ten Commandments. So what's wrong with thou, the, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's good, thou shalt not commit adultery. Does that really, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt, you know. So th this is where we're at because I think to some extent, a great extent that, that uh, uh, you know, that we've lost our minds. And the church wasn't bold. The church didn't speak up. The church just as quiet as a church mouse. Just not a peep, not a word. You know, and, and now, of course, people are all upset. No, no, we should have been upset back 
60 years ago. 70 years ago should have spoke up. But I'm going to say this in love, that generation messed up. And how much has this generation messed up? Because, you know, time has come and gone. And, um, but you look here where, where we left off this morning in, in, in Romans chapter 8. And I, I'm going to back up a little bit, and then we'll get into where I was, and then we'll move on in verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's Romans chapter 8. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Two different worlds. We got two, and this is talking about in the church, really, because he's talking to the believers in Rome. Two different worlds. We got people in the church, they're, at, they're, they're after the things of the Spirit. And then we got those who are after things of the flesh. For to be carnally minded, to, to be worldly minded, for in other words, your mind hasn't been renewed with the Word of God. For to be carnally minded is death. To be naturally minded, you know, I, I, this morning my family and I, we have lots of discussions, and, and I know people who are literally flaming liberals. And the other day I was on the Internet, and I was working on a book, and I, I saw a, a comment about some discussion they were having in one of these secular news channels about some of the things going on in our nation. I really don't know what they think or what they believe. I just don't, I don't give myself to them. I, I don't. You know, and matter of fact, a lot of people don't understand. I, I, you know what? If you're, if you're a Christian psychiatrist, I don't really want to hear a word you say. Now, people understand this. Well, why would you say that? Because even the Christian psychiatrists were brought up through Sigmund Freud. How many know who Sigmund Freud was? He, he's the foundation of the modern-day psychiatrist. He was a pedophile. You can look. It's not gossip. The guy was... He thought everything revolved around sex. He was a pervert. And yet we build, listen, you think about communism. It's built on mass murderers. The Mohammedan faith, uh, uh, you know, Muhammad. He, he, he was a murderer and a rapist. His youngest wife was 10 years old, I think. See, these, these are sick people. And, and yet people, instead of looking at the foundation, I was talking about the foundation of America education, it's gone. And, and yet, and, and yet you, you cannot convince people. I know liberals who have done work for me, they're, they're secularists, and, and you, you might as well just shut up because no matter what you say, you're wrong and they're right. And we know what the end results are. Look at the crime rate in this nation. Look at Look at the, 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 the immorality of this nation. Look at the perversion of this nation. And, and, and here, and I'm not getting political nice, this common sense. Here, all of these years, we talk about women's rights, and they work so hard for women's sports, really. Women's sports. And I agree with that. I think women should be able to compete with one another. And now you got, you got people who are saying they're women, and they're going in there, and they're breaking Olympic records, breaking records, and they're winning all of the prizes. And why in the world haven't the women of America risen up and said, we're not putting up with this. You're not doing this. You're not putting a pervert, yes, a pervert into my child's, uh, 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 you know. Well, they just did it here in Gettysburg. I couldn't believe it. A good friend of mine, John uh, Wiga, who's uh, uh, one of the marshals in town, and they had a, a, a man, a, a big man, who says is a woman who now, who, who was training the, 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 uh, the tennis, the tennis, team in in Gettysburg tennis team and this big guy got up and he said I'm no longer a, ma a man I'm a woman right he has all the same organs I'm a woman and he started going into the girls locker room right and so some of the parents listen to this in Gettysburg they called a special meeting with the school board and they had a big meeting and John said I was there he said Mike you can't believe this he said over he said only me and two or three other people stood up against this wickedness of a full grown man being in the little girls locker rooms and saying he's a woman and I said, you got to be kidding me. I would think, but that shows you the spiritual condition of Gettysburg. They, they are, listen, 
The doctors are not afraid to tell you when you're sick. If you come in, you're running a fever, they, they check your symptoms, they, they look at you and they go, well, it's obvious you got the flu or you've got this or you've got that. They're not afraid to say you're sick. Well, listen, I can look at this and say this, you're sick people. You're sick people. I, I've told homosexuals that through the years, you know, and I told them a lot. I said, I'm sorry, you're a sick puppy. And you need help. And the only one that can help you, you know what? We're all sick without Jesus. No, no, no. I mean, if you can imagine, there's been times when Pastor Mike wasn't really being spiritual like I should be. And if you would begin to video record me and how stupid I was acting, and, 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 and I would be extremely embarrassed if you watched some of the videos of some of the stuff, dumb stuff I've done since saved. How about you? Now, listen, if I thought I was so okay, I wouldn't care if you showed the video. I'd say, yeah, 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 that's, that's the way it is, right? No, no, because if we video record your shenanigans, you'd be so embarrassed you wouldn't want to be seen in public. Have you ever, ever acted in such a way where if it was video recorded, you wouldn't want to be seen in public? Come on, let's, let's be humble enough to admit that, right? Not me, never me, <laughs> right? But see, that's what we call the flesh. And to be carnally minded is death. People don't believe that no more. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what, what he really did, Paul had to do, he had to first expose the condition of the human heart. And these are believers in order to encourage them to begin to renew their minds. To do it the way that God does it to think it the way that God thinks it, to speak it the way that God speaks it. And verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, you shall, you shall die. That's not talking about physical death. That's talking about separation from God. If you live in the flesh, you shall die. You know, it says in Galatians, the works of the flesh are manifested, and they that do such things shall not inherit eternal life. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a, a, a book about, a, I never met the man, I knew his wife, and his name is uh, Milton Green. How many of you have ever heard of Milton Green? Any of you ever? Look him up. His videos are still there. Um, I wrote, I'm writing a book on his testimony. No one ever wrote his book. He had such a terrible life, and I haven't got time to get into it. But at 43 years old, he finally got born again. Filled the Holy Ghost. He was very suicidal. From the time he was a little boy, five years old, he was demonized. Uh, he, he went through terrible, terrible things, two mental institutions. He got gloriously born again. The, even the psychiatrist told him in one of the institutions, psychiatrist said, you know, Milt, there's no hope for you. He said, I, I was going to say maybe religion could help you, but religion won't even help you. Well, religion won't help you. Only Jesus can. But he, 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 he the, the Spirit of God came upon him rescued him, saved him. He got gloriously born again. And so I'm, I'm just finishing up a book about his life. And his teachings are still, you can still find them. But he, he really, he, he had a revelation of the flesh. And he had a revelation of the spirit. And the only way to deal with the flesh is by the spirit. That's the only way you can deal with the flesh. And this psychiatrist told him, he said, there's no hope for you. See, the, the world don't have the answer. Why in the world we as the body of Christ don't recognize this? They don't have the answer. We have the answer. It's a person. His name is Jesus. I tell you, the answer to you having heaven on earth is Jesus Christ. Having peace of mind, having joy, having victory, having power, having whatever God has promised all the promises in Christ are yea and amen. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. Now, some people can say, well, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Well, okay. Uh, but if you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God in us. When you got born again, the Spirit of God came in you. Would you acknowledge that? The Spirit of God came in you. And it's by the Spirit we overcome. But it's not just that. It's the Word. Because what's the weapon? The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, you understand, 
that scripture has got to become personal. You, you can't, now you can pray the word over people's lives, it's still their choice, but that's for you. Your weapon is mighty through God if you will hide the word of God in your heart. But you got to have the word of God in your heart. And the devil is going to do everything he can to keep you out of the word. And he's been very, very successful in many believers' lives. There's very little of the word of God in their heart because he's convinced them it's not the answer. You know, in a natural, right before service, I was talking to Charles and Patty. And you know what? Do, do you know that, that the number one way to lose weight? How many know the number one way to lose weight? It, it, you, you got what we call uh, elbow affliction. You got, you got to stop eating. That's how you lose weight. I lost 50 pounds a couple of years ago. I, 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 I stopped eating as much, and I watched what I ate. You know what? The victory that you're going to have in Christ is by stop eating what you shouldn't be eating and start eating what you should be eating. Now, it's easier said than done. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was thinking the other day, because uh, I, I was telling my son Daniel, I seen him back in 2011, really, really growing God, and that's because he decided that for three months, all he did was give himself to God's word. That's all he did. The word, the word, the word, the word. He's speaking it, thinking it, walking it, talking it. And I, I told him here some time ago, I thought, Daniel, you need to just get the word back in your heart, son. And, 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 and I was thinking as, as I was in prayer because, you know, God, God does, isn't easy on me. He, he, y'all don't have to discipline me. He's got me over his knee all the time. He ain't bouncing me, you know, tickling me. He's rebuking me. And he said, you're a hypocrite, son. He said, because you're not doing what you're telling your son Daniel to do constantly. How come you're not doing that as much as you should? Now, I'm in the Word all the time, but how come you're not doing it? As, see, it, there's a difference between writing books and meditating on the Word. Did you know that? But it's not the same. I'm meditating as I'm writing, but it's a big difference. I've got to hide the Word of God in my heart. And I can't be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might without the word of God in my heart. Now, when I was a kid growing up, there's one thing, you know, one of the, uh, my cartoons I love to watch on black and white TV because that's what we had when I was a kid. When I moved out, my dad, uh, he, he, he finally bought a color TV. But Popeye, how do you remember Popeye? Popeye the sailor man. You, you like Popeye? And you know what, Popeye, you know, he, 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 he's, you know, he's kind of husky, kind of strong. Uh, but when Brutus would beat him up, you know, and, and he, he, he'd get his hands on a can of spinach. And I, I think the spinach industry was behind it. I've always liked spinach, you know. I, I, I'll be honest, I like a little bit of spinach with a whole bunch of butter. <laughs> but, but, man, you know, he'd take that spinach, and I mean, all of a sudden his muscles would grow, and he'd burn, and he and now Brutus knew he was in trouble, and he'd run it. Well, listen, the devil knows you, you eat the word of God. And, 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 and Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word became unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. You begin to hide the word of God in your heart, and you'll become strong in faith. You'll be strong in God. You'll be strong in the truth, but you've got to eat the truth. You can't, you can't just... You know, I can know everything about eating the right kind of food or exercise. You know, I can go out here and buy the best program of how to build myself up physically uh, with my muscles, but I can't watch it on TV without doing it. Because if I don't do it, I'm not going to change it. I don't understand. I just, you know, my muscles ain't growing. I'm getting weaker. I'm not getting stronger. And I've watched 100 hours of how to develop yourself physically. Well, how I many know that don't do it? Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Now, maybe, possibly, but I've been here 42 years, so I don't really watch a lot of guys in the pulpit. Maybe people aren't being taught this truth. Or maybe they are and they just won't do it. What I want to say in love is when the Bible says we ought to increase the number of times we gather, how come the body's decreasing the number of times we gather? I mean, it's not because we're so spiritual. I'm just doing what God's word says. How come we're not being doers of the word and hearers only doing what? Deceiving ourselves. 
We're deceiving ourselves. We ought to be doing the word of God. So Paul, by the spirit of God, said, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds by you shall live. For as, and then it says this, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now I went to Ramah, Brother Hagin taught that word sons in the Greek as we us are mature sons. Be, be, uh, mature people, they, they hear the voice of God and they obey it. They're led by the Spirit of God, okay? Then we jump down here to verse, uh, verse 29. Well, let's back to verse 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So we talked this morning, what's the purpose? Well, it tells us right there, it doesn't say uh, what you're calling you. You're called to be a carpenter, an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet. It's not, that's not what Paul's talking about here. He tells us in the next verse, for whom he did for no, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. That's your purpose. For all things work together for good to them that love God, that are called according to his purpose. What's his purpose? to be conformed to the image of his son. Ha! That's your purpose. It goes back to Genesis. Let's make man in our likeness and our image. So what you say, I just don't understand why in the world am I in this world? Everything is insane. Everything's goofy. Everything's nuts. God never lost his way. God never got confused. God's always kept his blueprint, his plan, his purpose for the human race. And what is it to be? That's what Jesus prayed in John 17. Father, make him one with us even as we are one. Here's the purpose. Now, it might not be exciting to you, but this is God's purpose. He wants you to be conformed to the image of his son. Oh, I'm so excited. See, I'm boldly preaching this. That's my purpose in life. See, my first purpose isn't being a pastor or being a husband or being a father. Because guess what? If, if I'm conformed to the image of his son, I'm going to be a good pastor. I'm going to be a good daddy, a good husband, a good worker. All these other things are just, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added on to you. So we get the cart before the horse. I remember years and years ago, I, I was praying and I made a list because people would teach you this. Uh, you got to set your priorities right. Okay, first God, second this, third this, fourth this, fifth this, and I made this list. I remember what it said. And one day I'm in prayer and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, throw away that list. I said, what? He said, throw away that list. I said, okay, what am I going to do? He said, listen, the first priority is for you to seek me. He said, when you seek me, I'll get a hold of you, and all of these other things will come naturally. My priorities will get right. If I'll seek first the kingdom of God in his, we'll say, personality, his holiness, his good, who he is. If I'll seek him, and that's what he said, for whom he did for and all, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. See, you're called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he also justified, them he also glorified, or he manifested himself in them. So, hey, you're, you're one of the few. You're one of the chosen. You're one of the called. You're one of the justified. You're one of the glorified. And we ought to be shouting. We, ought to hand, we, we should have handed out those, those party hats and those whistles, you know, they used during the new year. Well, you're a new man. You're a new creation. In Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things are become new. Say all. Now, you got to stop and think, because I was telling Gordon, Lynn, uh, Gordon uh, Klingenschmidt, who was a senator, he's a good friend of mine, before he became a senator in Colorado, and I had been on, I was looking for men who preached the truth. And I was on the internet, this is back, oh, maybe, I don't know, 25 years ago, and I, call, I came across this, this Air Force uh, uh, officer 
who also did a radio program. I got a hold of Gordon and uh, put him on our radio station for free because he was talking about uh, Mr. Lukewarm, uh, Mr. Excuse, and, and, and Mr. Obedient. And he, it was kind of like he, a thing he did where he's trying to show, you know, lukewarm was Mr. Christian who was being to told by uh, the, 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 the pa pa pastor, Mr. Something Pastor, who is a mess, that you can live any way you want and go to heaven. And, and so Mr. Obedient would step in and say, no, 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 uh, faith without works is dead. It was a good program. So I, and, and then he got it in his heart to become a, a uh, he, uh, he wanted to become a chaplain. Well, they didn't have no room in the, in the Air Force. So he left the Air Force. He got transferred, took some, uh, uh, went down in his position as an officer and became a chaplain. Well, then he got into big trouble because uh, he was told that he could no longer pray in the name of Jesus Christ. He defied them, and they court-martialed him, and he lost 20-some years of, of, of whatever it was. But So we, we communicate some. He got a hold of me the other day, wanted to do, zoo, a, do a Zoom meeting and record it, put it on seven TV stations he's on. It's going to be on the 27th, my program's with him, two of them. And he talked to me. He said, Pastor Mike, talk. he said, you, you're my mentor. And I started laughing. I said, I, I, I don't know about that. He said, well, you're my mentor. He said, uh, and the guy's probably in his, his 50s or a little bit older. And he, he, said, uh, he, he said, tell me what you think repentance is. And I said, a lot of people have the idea that repentance is basically that you're just turning away from what's evil. I said, repentance to me is much, much deeper. Repentance is when all things become new. All things. How you talk, how you walk, how you think, how you act, what you do, your motives, your desires, that's repentance. For in other words, you're saying in every, so how many know we have a whole bunch of repenting to do? You know, Speaking death over your life, repent. Trusting the arm of the flesh, repent. Huh? Uh, getting swallowed up by the cares of this world, repent. Now, I'm not talking about the fact of you losing your soul because we know in Galatians 5, it tells us the works of the flesh are manifested, and they that do such things shall not inherit eternal life. Be, be, being, you know, having worry won't damn your soul to hell. Aren't you glad? You ought to say, praise the Lord. Being anxious won't damn your soul to hell. I mean, you know, getting upset at times won't, you know. Matter of fact, it says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So there's times we, we get upset. Don't sit there and look so innocent. There's times we get upset because we have flesh. Now, I told you this morning, they couldn't get Jesus. Now, I know he went in there by the Spirit of God and overturned. That was the wrath of God. The zeal of God was manifested. It wasn't human anger. I just, I just did a, a, a book about victory over anger, victory over bitterness, because we need it. We need to get victory over this stuff. Uh, what shall I then say with these things? If God, listen, in verse, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Jesus said, don't fear a man that can destroy the body. Rather, fear him which can destroy both soul and body in hell. And so there, 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 there are so many declarations about the fact that the Lord is on our side. Psalms 118, verse 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. Now, we're not talking about a proud for arrogance, because I've known men in the world that, yeah. Can't scare me. Well, if you're not born again, you ought to be scared. If you die in your sins, you ought to be scared. You're going to stand before it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of, a, of an angry God. If you're out of his will, you ought to be scared. And if you're not scared, it just means you're stupid. I mean, if you're living outside of God's will, knowingly, willingly, purposely, you ought to be scared. You ought to want to get right with God. That's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You don't hear much of the fear of the Lord anymore being preached because it's departed from the earth. I believe, though, that God is bringing back the fear of the Lord. And I believe that's why it says in Hebrews, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, that only that which eternal may remain. And he's not talking about the economy being shook or just, you know, nature being shook. He's saying, I'm going to shake everything that that which is eternal may remain and everything else is going to fall apart like sandcastle next to uh, the ocean when a big old wave just comes and knocks it over with. You know, so we should. 
uh, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 16, 11, he, he says, uh, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like man, be strong, let all your things be done with love. Watch, stand fast, be strong. We ought to be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. That's what it says, be strong in the Lord. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak. Now, you're not telling people that. You're speaking it to yourself. Your tongue is the rudder of your boat. How many of you got a steering wheel in your car? Okay, the rest of you, I'm not getting in your car. You got a steering wheel in your car, and that steering wheel, it takes you whatever direction you go. Whether you know this or not, Jesus said, you have what you say. You can have what you say. And your tongue is taking you in the direction that you're speaking. So if you're speaking death, you're speaking fear, you're speaking sickness, you're speaking lack, you're speaking, and, and people, we fall into this thing innocently, you know, ignorantly. We don't mean to. Nobody, we haven't been taught, you know. But, you know, the Israelites, they were raised, and he, they had to have the word of God if they would have obeyed what Moses told them to do. They were supposed to have the word of God before them all the time, even written on the doorposts of their houses and the wall of their houses. They even had them between their eyes. You know, they carry a little box in their foreheads with scriptures rolled up in there because they, they wanted him to realize, get, get your mind on the word, get your mind on the truth. Get your, you can do all, you know, Paul, what, what did, what did uh, God tell Joshua? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid and neither de be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So when, 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 when God calls us to do certain things, and we begin to not look to us because Paul said we are those who have no confidence in the flesh, but we're looking to God. We're looking to God. You know, I'm, I look to God to have a good marriage. I really do because I'll mess it up. And Paul said we are those. We don't have no confidence in our flesh. Our confidence is in God. So I look to God to have a good marriage. I look to God to meet my financial needs, not just my personal needs, but even you know, the, 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 the needs of this ministry, I look to God, and God does it. You know, in, in the natural, you know, our offering has been pretty low lately. You know, people are going on vacation. People are gone. Uh, people are going through hard times. And, you know, and, and, and it's amazing that, that like, this week I, I went on PayPal a couple of days ago, and here a, a guy I don't know, uh, well, I, I met him once, but he's never come to church here but once. He gave $500, and another guy who doesn't come to church here, he gave $200, and I don't ask for money. You know, not too long ago, somebody called me up and out in the parking lot and they handed me $1,000. Boom. You know, they were obedient to God. I mean, that's how God, I had one time, well, I was in financial need and an old van pulled up to my dome. I don't tell people my needs, really. And, uh, and, and, and beeped the horn and I came out to this old van and this woman sitting in there. She needed a new vehicle. And she said, the Lord spoke to me, Brother Mike. She's out of Lancaster and handed me a, a thick envelope. And I thanked her and prayed over her. She left and there was $7,000 in there. I had another older couple that, uh, you know, I, they sold their land. I didn't. They came here once in a while, and, and I was twenty some thousand dollars behind. And 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 back in the uh, early two thousands, and and one day I went, I uh, counted the offering, and here was the check for twenty thousand dollars. But but I'll, I'll just confront some here. You got to really really watch gossip. Gossip will get you because people assume all kinds of stuff. So I had a woman who just. The other day sent me a letter. She was all mad. She said, you know, I think she gave like $5,000 to the orphanage over there in, in Africa. And she accused me of not giving that $5,000. I gave that $5,000 plus more. Well, why in the world would she believe we didn't give all that money that people gave to the orphanage to the orphanage? The devil telling people things, whispering things, causing strife and division. I'm not in a war against it. You can't stop it. You pray, you keep your, faith, you keep your heart right, and you just do what God says. I had a guy come to me one time and said, Pastor Mike, I, I can't believe the things that I'm hearing about what you've done. I said, well, first of all, if you want to know what I've done, I've never hit it. It's in my book, I Need God Because I'm Stupid. It's right there. I said, but if all of these things you're accusing me of, I did, I should be in jail. But I know I'm innocent. 
in that regard. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I know one time Joanna heard and she went all the way down in Maryland somewhere preaching a church and they asked her, they said, well, where are you staying? Well, I'm staying with Mike Yeager and, and, and at Jesus Lord Vince. She said, what do you mean you're staying with them? They're, they're gone. She said, no, they're not gone. Oh, yeah, they're, they're gone. We know they're gone. No, they're not gone. We've been staying there for like eight years now. They have a place for us to stay. Well, did, did Mike and Kathy ever get back together? Said what? Did Mike and Kathy ever get back together? We heard they separated. No, they never separated. Well, we, this is a Pentecostal church. We, we heard they got divorced. No, they never got divorced. They said, well, did he ever repent for committing adultery? And, 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 uh, and Joanna said, he's never committed adultery. This is a Pentecostal full gospel church down in beyond Maryland, so in Maryland somewhere. But that ain't nothing the rumors I've heard. You know what I do? I just say, hey, you believe what you want to believe. I'm, I'm too busy serving God. Amen? So if you go around trying to answer all the gossip, all the lies, all the strife, all the backbiting, you can't do it. I've always told people, you got a question, ask me. I'll tell you the truth. If I'm guilty, I'll tell you I'm guilty. You know why? Because liars won't go to heaven. Hello? Oh, that's good preaching. I, I think I'll do a little bit more. And, and so what should we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, you, you know, in Romans 4.20, I love this. And, and, and he staggered. Now, we're talking about Abraham. I want to get a book of Acts tonight because it talked about how they were bold. Nine times they boldly proclaimed Christ. It says that they, 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 they said they took notice that these men had been with Jesus because they preached boldly. You know what boldly means? It means you tell it the way it is in love. And you just let happen what's going to happen. You just tell people in love. Hey, this is what the word of God says. This is what the truth says. This is what the Bible says. And if you want to get mad at me, that's your problem. It ain't my problem, honey. It, this is what the Bible says. And you speak it in love and truth is truth. And, you know, I, people don't understand who Jesus really was. Jesus was, well, he was bold. He, he was not ugly bold, but John the Baptist, every true prophet of God is bold. When you're moving in faith, when there's faith in operation, there will not be any fear. You know, you say, what if? Well, what if what? I mean, you think about this. Okay, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. And if for some reason, you know, I don't get the answer to my prayer and I die, don't cry for me. I'm in heaven. Hello, I'm in heaven. Jesus came to deliver them who their whole lifetime was subject to the fear of death that he might deliver them from the fear of death. You know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Say power. Say it with power. Power, love, right? Love, that's important, and a sound mind. You see someone who isn't moving in a spirit of power and love, they don't have a sound mind. You look at people who have a spirit of fear on them, their mind is not sound. I know I've been there. I've ever been there when I allowed certain kind of fears to come into my life, you know. I mean, hey, way back, I don't know why I was afraid of hornets and bees. And one day, Kathy and I, this many, many years ago, and, and you know, we're driving down the road and our windows were open and a bee flew into my car, right? It got in front of Kathy. She just went, you know what? All of a sudden, I'm all over the road. I mean, I'm trying to kill that bee. Ah. Uh, I'm, I mean, Kathy said, what are you doing? You're going to get us killed. I said, it's a me. It was like, you know, a spirit of fear got on me. Can you imagine? I got a spirit of fear over a bee. And I was going to get us killed. I can tell you something, though. I've gotten victory over it. I'm not afraid of bees anymore. Matter of fact, we had a beehive out here that we were going to have our own honey. It didn't work. They all died. But I went out there one day to check on the bees, and I had on my hood and everything. And uh, I, I didn't check myself, and there was a little opening in my neck. Next thing you know, the bees are crawling all inside of there, you know, and they're stinging me, you know. And, and you know, and I didn't freak out, though. I didn't go, ah, and start smacking them. I just went, 
uh-oh, I just got stung. <laughs> you know, I must add six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, they, 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 I don't know why they say bee stings are good to get rid of arthritis. So, you know, now that's what they say. I don't know if it's true or not. But so I got home and my face was swollen up, my throat was swollen up. I said, well, baby, I got stung by bees. <laughs> but I used to almost crash our car with one bee in the car, one bee, one bee. <laughs> my wife said, what are you doing, honey? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know. I, I should have said, a spirit of fear is on me. <laughs> He's going to sting me. <laughs> it's, but you know what? It's easy to act stupid because we're in the flesh. I know none of you ever act stupid. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Remember, we began with being the carnally minded as death. But mighty through God, mighty. We got mighty weapons casting down every imagination, every high thing. Uh, Psalms 37, 23, the steps of man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You know, Paul said, I've learned. I, I, I know how to be full, and I know how to be abased. I know how to abound, and I know how to suffer need. What do you mean I know? He said, I'm the same guy. Whether I'm in a castle or I'm, I'm, I'm in a dungeon locked up in a cell with my head in, 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 you know, in chains and my arms, and I'm the same guy. That, that's what faith does. Faith makes you the same all the time. I mean, you don't have mood swings. Uh-oh, he got up on the wrong side of the bed today. You better watch out. Faith gives you victory. Listen, I know I'm talking about here as we get ready to close. There are so many other scriptures. Faith gives you victory. Listen to this. We all got to fight it at times. Depression. Hopelessness. Vanity. What, what's the use? Vanity of vanities. And Because and, I, I was manic depressant. I'm telling you, I can't remember a time from even being a child where I was not depressed. And, and, and if you could have been in my shoes, you'd understand, well, I mean, I had a hearing problem. Uh, I had a speech impediment. I had lung problems. Nobody could understand me. I didn't have any friends. Everybody made fun of me, literally, because I couldn't talk right. And when they would talk, I couldn't understand what they were saying. My hearing was so bad. End up in lung. And, and my, my, my dad, he, 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 he you know, I, I remember some time, good times with my dad, but he had a he, he, he had some real issues with alcohol and uh, other problems. He left home at 15. His dad, he was known as, if you ever read my autobiography of my childhood, I wrote it. He, 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 his, his, his dad, he was like the last, the youngest of seven children. And my, my grandpa was called the Texas Kid. And he, and he married his wife. We came from a wealthy family. Well, by the time he got done drinking and gambling, it was all gone. And he'd come home and beat my dad with a leather strap, take him out to the woodshed. So my dad left at 15. Well, my dad was not quite as bad as what he was, but he, he, he had problems. I didn't know two years later. He, he made good mon money working for NASA. We should have been living in a nice house. But we, and I'm not complaining. We live in a real small two-bedroom house. And my brother and I, Dennis, we lived in the basement. You know, my sister Debbie lived upstairs and my parents. And it was just a, a small little house. You know, probably let probably a thousand square feet house. Always drove old cars. You know, we, we never really had any good clothes. You know, my dad told me, he said, the government only requires me to give you two shirts and a pair of pants. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what he told me. I lived, I left home at 15 years old. You know, uh, first time I tried to commit suicide, I was 16 driving my car on the other side of the road. Uh, but I had thought about committing suicide. Listen, and, and this is not funny. I was so tormented as a little boy, seven years old. We had two little beagles, peanuts and cuddles. And I was so full of, of frustration and hate and anger and depression. I would literally take those pup, those dogs, and I would choke them till they were almost dead. Their tongues would be hanging out of their mouth. 
and then I would weep and cry and, and hope they would start breathing again. And then I'd do it all over again. I mean, that's who I was. And so on my 19th birthday, when I was committing suicide, and I got gloriously born again, and I stepped into this place of God. He was real. His peace was real. His joy was real. His love was real. I didn't care what people thought about me because every, nobody had a good opinion of me. If anybody has a good opinion of me now, I'm way better off than I was before I got saved. Nobody had a good opinion of me. Nobody. Nobody. And so when I got born again, the reason why I went so fanatical, I didn't have a reputation to lose. I didn't have a good reputation. I didn't have... There wasn't one thing in Mike Yeager that was desirable. Not one thing. So I got gloriously born again, and I entered into this place, and I was bold. I mean, I tell people, especially when God loosed my tongue and I could now finally speak. I, I was, Jesus, I, I got to tell you about Jesus, you know, because I'm a brand new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, and I really don't know much of the word of God. But see this, this divine life we have, and, and the devil is doing everything he can to stop us from experiencing it, from walking in it, from enjoying it, from partaking of it. Um, and it's all by faith. It, it, we, we need to understand this. Say it's by faith. It's all by faith. So, Father, we thank you for who we are and what we have and what we can do in you. Lord, help us to rise up and uh, just to take authority over our flesh, our mind, our emotions, our circumstances, the problems. Cast all our cares on you and begin to trust you and look to you and love you and obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now we know, we, we experience it. Pastor Charles has been pastoring for years, went to Ramah. And he'll tell you, we, we, we try to help people, don't we, Charles? But a lot of times, we are even in a prayer room tonight. He was praying along that line. Sometimes you can't help people. Do you know why? They, they, they don't want to see the truth. And the very first truth you got to do is confront yourself. That, that's, yeah, I know the devil's a problem, but all he's doing is using your flesh against you. You're the biggest problem you have in this world, whether you believe it or not. You're the biggest problem you have. I used to think it was my wife. Now, how can you be so stupid and still breathe? Was it my wife? It was Mike Yeager. And so, I say this a lot. That's why there's so much divorce in marriage, because, well, it's her. Get another one. It's her. Get another one. It's her. Get another one. It's her. It's, well, when are you going to stop and say it can't be all of them? It's got to be some of you, right? It's got to be some of you. And, and you know what? I read a survey. They said almost all your marriages, most of them, most of them. Now, don't forgive me. There's forgiveness. There's, there's a new beginning. You just let go of the past, forgetting. Paul did a lot of terrible things, probably worse than what you'll ever do in this world. He says, this one thing I do, forgetting what's behind. I can't change it now. I say it's milk the cat licked up. Can't change it. I just let it go. But, but let's not go around the mountain again. Let's... let's Let's not go around the mountain again and keep doing the same stupid thing. Let's just say, okay, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this is where I'm at. This is what's going on, and I'm going to make it work. Say, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to look to God, and the first thing it's going to do is begin with me. God, change me in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. Hallelujah.